Trump needs to win in 2024. They've tried to bury him. They've tried to say that he is dangerous, when in fact, if he was president, I do not believe we'd be in the wars that we're involved in. We need a wartime leader. We need somebody to turn our country around, hold people accountable, and they need to be scared of the stick that we hold because America is still the greatest superpower that ever was. Have a lot of money to start this company? No, man, we didn't have any money. So my first line of credit was for $15,000. I'll never forget it because my payrolls were like $2,500 a week because I had like two guys maybe. And we were doing backyard buildings. And so I always say about when it comes to dealing with the banks, always go to the banks when you're solvent and you have a lot of money. But in the case that you don't have a lot of money, that's what an entrepreneur does. He figures it out. So I took my contracts that I had won and then I went to the bank and showed them that I had a contract and they gave me a little loan against it to get me through the first couple. No pain greater than heartbreak. But you're not doing yourself a service by begging a woman to come back. If you start contacting her, or blowing her phone up, or watching her stories, or phoning her mom, and doing all of these things that are emotional actions, she's naturally going to be less attracted to you. I don't even act like a hard ass. I'm really going to miss you. Take care. And she's like, wait, what? That's it? Cold. Gotta be a G, bro. Like my favorite quote, and the one that I say all the time, is you can tell the size of a man by the size of his problems. You're going to have problems in life. Either you're not going to be able to pay the light bill or somebody's going to owe you a million bucks. Pick your problem, homeboy. One of them comes with a story. One of them is shit. At 26, I had a job in New Orleans. We did a school project that uh, a guy walked off the job on me. And it cost me $25,000 because I had to get my contract supplemented. So if you're a subcontractor and you have a general contractor and you're working for a school, they have what's called liquidated damage. And liquidated damage is like $3,000 a day for every day you're late. And what ended up happening was when that guy walked off that job, that was the only superintendent I had because we were small. Because you're always trying to fluctuate the amount of work with the manpower. So you're always constantly trying to juggle it. And if you have a good guy, you got to keep them busy. And I only had one. And so like keeping that balance of the work and the talent is, is always one of the harder parts, especially when schedules get pushed back. They don't pour slab or whatever. Long story short, I lost 25,000 and I had to go work as a project manager for a company for a year. What I did during that time is I picked up mentors in the metal building commercial space that started to help me develop all the estimating and all the things I, I needed to do to really get the bids correct in the first place, get my proposals right. And uh, I'd wake up at like three or four in the morning, I'd go work out and then I'd go estimate work before my real job started. And then I, I'll never forget, I, I thought I was such a baller. I got $500,000 worth of contracts. And I knew that was enough that if I left my job and I hit anywhere close to the margin that I had estimated, I'd be fine. So I put in the resignation and took off again. And um, we definitely have, as we have evolved, we've grown into you know new problems 